Oh, good. You're here. I'm glad. Though it isn't as hard as it used to be to gather, we have our own world now, safe from those who aren't her children. And indeed, if you weren't meant to see this, you'd be seeing this. Our message has gotten through and it's touched that part of you that's part of us. So welcome. Welcome to the Dragonfly Temple of Hukate. I'm Dawn Everbright, Cirrus in the Dragonfly Temple, and I'm here to tell you a story about one of the three, about Zach Frack. It's called A Lost Heart. The woman watched the crescent moon above from the vantage point of the little bridge. Below, the waters of West Wind River ran swiftly, swollen with the gift of the spring runoff, runoff impossibly running up from hill from Hukate's Valley. With a chill still in the air this early in the season, the straw white blonde gathered her spring green cloak around her. She also shivered with anticipation. Her mentors, chosen for her from among the adepts of the Dragonfly Temple, had warned her she would have to pass a test of fealty, and she was nervous. What if I don't pass, she whispered to the dragonfly that had alighted on her bracelet, attracted, she thought, to the shiny silver metal. I love him. This is his life now. I can't be without him. But is that the right decision? For me to stay because of him? She looked around, taking in the landscape, the soft lights glittering off her insect friend's red wings. I know that's not a reason to be here, a rational one anyway, she laughed. Oh goddess, where is my head? Here, talking to a dragonfly, on the banks of the most beautiful river I've ever seen, and the most beautiful place I've ever been, about the most wonderful man you've ever known, came a woman's voice behind her. She turned, startled. The dragonfly held fast to her elaborate bracelet, a gift from the man she loved, the man she wanted to be with forever, the man she had lost in a diner in a little town at the bottom of the mountain. You are a Don Everbright child. The woman seemed not to ask, but confirm her identity. Dawn lowered her head in respect, her cloak's hood falling over her face, swallowing her vision. Yes, yes, ma'am, she replied, trying to pull the cloak hood back, failing utterly to keep her hair in check and out of her face. The newcomer laughed. You will get the hang of wearing one of these in time, she advised. You do not have the advantage I have of having worn one ever since I could walk. No, I guess not. I, what? Oh, wow. Dawn stopped short, seeing the color of her cloak. I, uh, well, what does black mean? She asked, uncertain. Seralena, Miss Everbright, the older woman replied. Sorry, it, it means, poor Dawn was even more confused now than ever. My name is Seralena, dear, she was corrected, and you will not see many cloaks of black here, and only two with the blue highlights. She gazed out over the bridge railing, enjoying the view taking her time in the conversation. I wasn't told about black, what it means, I mean, Everbright pursued. I know green are acolytes, the lighter blue ones are intermediate, the orange more so, and the red adepts, and we are the hudicors, sorry, interrupted. Well, black are, and those who are their cirruses, bonded into the bloodline, having the bejewelment added. She paused, seeing Dawn back up slightly, knowing it was partly in fear partly in awe at Sari's black eyes. She smiled. You have nothing to fear from me, dear. I am not mad. That is the exclusive territory of the males. Don tried to relax, succeeding only partly. Oh, I, I guess it would be wrong to assume an entire family's mental stability based on one individual. And normally you would be right. But in this case, 81 generations of direct male descendants have fallen prey to the burning, the madness, she corrected herself. Don couldn't help but gape. Uh, excuse me, but did you say 81? Yes, I did. 81, 
Only my husband Eric has thus been spared. But there will be an end to it. Soon. Sorry confirmed. How do you know? Don breathed. I'm not sure I should tell you. You are, after all, a reporter. Sorry said measuredly. I'm, I, I'm not here for a story, ma'am, she said a little too quickly. Uh, originally, I just came to see Zack to tell him I'm sorry. It, it wasn't my fault. Baby followed me to the diner. The black-cloaked woman straightened. You do not need to convince an old woman of what you already know to be true, dear. She held out a hand, and the red dragonfly flew from Don's bracelet to her finger, perching there, studying it. He knows, and you both have your own reality. Don leaned back against the railing. But does he believe me? He didn't at the diner. He was scared, Sorry told her, and rightly so. We have been burned in the past, and there is too much at stake now to risk getting caught. The women you live with are dangerous. They will never rest until they have hunted us, never stop until they kill us. Don's eyes went wide. Pippi would never. That is not why you are here, though, I think, Sorry interrupted. You are wise enough to let people work things out in their own time. I see that about you. There is more about you and your motives. The reporter's shoulders slumped slightly. I'm not sure I'm even thinking straight, the MWHO reporter admitted. Zack is just dazzling. I don't know how else to explain it. His energy is so vibrant, yet he's so quiet, though sometimes he drags into work half asleep. She laughed. There are reasons for that, Sorry said cryptically. I know, and that's what Zack said. I haven't pushed him. I know he'll still be... Tell me when he's ready. More like when you are ready, dear, the Cirrus counseled her. Am I? Dawn sniffed. Or is my head so confused by love? Is that why I'm here? He, he said I'm a child of Hukate, and I, I don't even know what that means. Sorry placed a hand below the distraught woman's collarbone, indicating her heart. You do, in here. And because this is so new to you, the safest place for you is here with us. But how do I know for sure? Dawn asked, tears running down her cheeks. How do I know I don't just love what he's become, not what he is inside? Or how do I know he really loves me? It is times like this that test us, dear, sorry Lena counseled, and he is inside what he is becoming. They're one and the same. And if you were not a child of Hukate, then how could you even understand me as we speak? The reporter looked up, realizing she'd been speaking the sacred language the entire time. I, I guess you're right about that, she admitted to the Cirrus. She gazed over the water where the dragonflies were hunting for their evening meals, catching mosquitoes, diving with them under the water to drown them. But Zack, she looked back up. The Cirrus was gone. Sorry? The red dragonfly danced before her with a black one who had joined her from the river. The new companion darted off back over the waters to hunt. Reflexively, Dawn put out her hand, and the red one came to her, landing on the same fingertip as before. She gazed into its faceted eyes. Her light reflected off the torches that lined the little river bridge. Tears filled her eyes. Tell him for me, she pleaded. Tell him I'm sorry. Tell him I, I love him no matter what happens, even if he never wants to see me again. I'll never stop loving him. She broke down at the thought. The dragonfly took off, zipping back and forth over the waters below, diving underneath, disappearing. Dawn pulled her cowl off, longing to feel the cool air dry her tear-stained face. The dragonfly broke the surface, zipping up towards her and landing quickly and neatly next to her on the railing. She ignored it in her pain. I'm sorry, too. Zack? Dawn looked wildly around at the sound of Zack's voice, but there was no one else on the bridge, only the red dragonfly. A peculiar light caught, below caught her eye, reflecting off a stalled eddy of water trapped beneath rocks that spun only slowly, draining slower into the rest of the babbling river. Her eyes flew wide. Zack's image leaned casually on the railing next to her in its reflection. She jerked up. He was next to her, golden eyes regarding her quietly. Thank you for attending. Thank you for listening.
I hope that this will be the beginning of a wonderful path for you and that you may have many long, wonderful days serving Pukate.